Britain has a big problem. Only the Americans are getting fatter than we are, faster than we are. <gasps> You're 18 stone oh, nine. Of course. Just under 19 stone. Wow. Though obsessed with our waistlines, for some, huge weight gain is a complete mystery. I don't think I eat enough to warrant this size. I've got friends who eat the same as me and they're like matchsticks. I don't think it's fair that I am the weight I am for what I eat. But how many of us are in denial about what we eat? Hi, can I place an order, please? And hide the extent of our scoffing from our families and ourselves. Are we a nation of secret eaters? It's time for a big, fat reality check. Using secret cameras and private investigators... OK, they're on the move. We're going undercover across the UK to find out what Brits are really putting away. And we'll be laying traps to prove just how easy it is for all of us to succumb to secret eating. Hello. Fancy a hot dog? Yes, why not? Will what we uncover in our surveillance... Oh, my God! ..hold the answers? I feel a bit sick. Because if you want to lose weight, you really need to know the truth about how you're putting it on. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, I am so hungry! It's hideous, absolutely hideous. I'm on my way to see Ray Donnell and his wife-to-be, Angela Morris, from Bolton, who don't understand why they're getting bigger. Hi! Hi. You all right? How are you? Fine, nice nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, yeah. Anna. How long have you known each other? Five and a half years we've been together. I used to do deck collecting, knocking oh. on doors, oh, collecting no. money, and he was one of my... Yeah. I knocked on his door. So she got a bit more than she bargained for. <laughs> She didn't just get the debts. <laughs> Did you trade yourself in in place of the debt? You're like, I haven't got any money, yeah, but you can have I said, me. You know, you're going to have to have me. <laughs> <laughs> no money this week. So it's from there, really, and that's five and a half years later. When they met, Ange was 11 stone and Ray 16. But as Ray and Ange's love has grown, so have their waistlines. Ange, if we talk about you, what do you tend to eat during the day? It depends if I'm working, but I tend to have like frosty shreddies. So I, you have your, your breakfast or after shreddies? Sometimes I skip breakfast. OK. Sometimes I'll have a mid-morning snack. Which might be... Banana. OK, so it's healthy. Yeah, and then if Ray's on the late shift, yeah. then he'll make me a salad. And then in the evening, do you have an evening meal as well? Sometimes I'll have the, you know, the M&S fuller for longer. Oh, yeah, you think? yeah. OK, so you see, what you're saying there sounds to me like you're not eating an enormous amount of food. No. I don't actually think I have that much to eat, because definitely on some days I don't have nowhere near perhaps the calories I should have. It does actually get frustrating because you think, oh, well, you've had your breakfast, you've had a banana, you've had a salad, not had that much for my tea. Why am I putting this weight on? You see these, like, skinny people, you think, you're eating all that, and then why are you not putting any weight on, you know? I don't know what's causing the weight gain. It is a bit of a mystery. Hopefully, we'll get to the bottom of it. Now, Ray, <laughs> tell me about your eating habits, then. I think I eat average, apart from the like, odd snacks and the odd beer now and again. OK, so what might you have for brekkie? A piece of toast and some cereal. And then what else might you have? At tea time at work, I'll have, like, a microwave meal. That's nothing. You're hardly eating anything. If you're prone to, to weight, which I think that's what's, what's wrong with me, the weight just comes on fast and furious. I don't think I eat massive amount, you know. I've got friends who, who eat the same as me and, and they're like matchsticks. I can just look at a Mars bar and I'll put weight on them. <laughs> I'm going to get me uh, trusty scales out. Oh, nice. I'm ready? OK. Ooh. Bang on 14 <sighs> stone. That's really bad. Is that the heaviest you've ever been? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Raimondo? <laughs> wow! 
No way. Just under 19 stone. I've never been that big. That's the heaviest been you've ever been? Life. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. All right, ding, can ding. I get off them, then? You can get off them. Have you had yourself checked out at all by the doctor? Have you gone down those routes at all? With... I did have a few years back. You know, your, um, is it your thyroid? Your thyroid, yeah. And that was normal. That's normal. Bit of a mystery. Ray and Ange have agreed to let us monitor their every mouthful for five days to get a true picture of what they really eat. I think we need some help. Good. <laughs> Don't we? Yeah. <laughs> Can I come to the wedding? Yeah. yeah. When, you, when you're both thin? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there is a big reason why they haven't named the day. Let us some confit. Yeah, it would be a bit fit. The word every bride wants to hear about her wedding dress. Comfy. I'm certainly not going to get in a wedding dress looking like I am. Definitely not. We both love to, like, just lose the weight to look better for the wedding pictures, you know? And, actually, to, so I can get a shirt, so I can fasten the top button. If we can't get to the bottom of why this couple keep pining on the pounds, they'll only end up heavier ever after. With the surveillance cameras rolling for the next five days and two top private investigators, Cameron Gowlett and Duncan Mee, poised to track them wherever they go, we'll see if Ray and Ange are secret eaters. Are they hiding the truth about what they eat from each other and themselves? To get an idea of what they think they eat, we asked Ray and Ange to complete a food diary for a week. Ange recorded eating about 2,000 calories a day with lots of bananas and diet dinners. In Ray's diary, he listed eating around 2,900 calories a day and said he regularly had cereal for breakfast and salads for lunch. Will our surveillance tally with their diaries or will we discover discrepancies between what they believe they eat and what they actually eat? It's 6pm on the first night of surveillance and Ange is eating a low-calorie ready meal designed to fill you up. Now, she did tell me this is a typical dinner. But wait a minute. What's that on the side of Ange's plate? Three slices of garlic bread at around 70 calories each. That's nearly as much as her meal. Beware the health halo trap. Like Ray and Ange, dieters who have low-fat food are 21% more likely to allow themselves calorie-laden extras. Dinner over, Ange is now back in the kitchen. How long was she full for? That would be the sum total of 17 minutes before she hits two chocolate tea cakes at 106 calories each. It's day two of surveillance, and Ray's off in the car, his own private sanctuary, where, as far as he's concerned, no one is watching. But look what happened half an hour earlier. That would be PI's Cameron and Duncan fitting a tracking device to his car. Ah, yeah, nice job. Where are you going, Ray? This is a man on a mission, and this is our man on his tail. He's uh, filling up the car. But it's not just the car that gets refuelled. It was a Mars bar pit stop. <laughs> ah. Ray doesn't know it yet, but he's been caught in the act. And he's not the only one. <laughs> to show what questionable food choices we're all capable of, we've placed temptation in some unlikely locations. Today, we've set up secret cameras outside a gym in South London where people go to work up a sweat and burn off the fat. The sort of place you go to feel healthy and virtuous. Which is why we've decided to give out free hot dogs just outside it. Saintly, sinful. Feel the burn, the call of the bum. Will anyone succumb? Maybe not. This is, after all, a place of worship for the body conscious. Fancy hot dog? You right, chaps? Do fancy some hot dogs? No takers, then. Oh, hello, Mr Lifeguard. 
So they're definitely free, yeah? Yeah, here we Crap go. Off. Can I have one, please? Yeah, of course you can, my friend. Fair enough. Maybe it's his break and maybe he hasn't eaten yet this morning. And his clothes are condiment coloured, but surely no one would bother working up a sweat and then blow it all just outside the building. You want a hot dog, my friend? <laughs> Come on then. Oh, they would. My bad. What have you been doing in the gym? Oh, Going for a swim? Yeah. Any good? Yeah. Say the nice man swam for 40 minutes, he'd have burned off around 390 calories. Exactly what's in this bad boy. This gym bunny is far more sceptical about our offer of a post-workout snack. Do you know what's in that sausage? Go on. Everything. Check Not check healthy. Yeah. You don't think it's healthy? No. But a friend doesn't care. It's free food. So how many exercise fiends were tempted to undo all their hard work for the sake of a free 390-calorie hot dog? Thank you. This is luxury. A, 24%. B, 42%, or C, 76%. We'll be back later with the results. Lots of Brits report putting on weight when in a relationship, and that's certainly the case for these Lancashire lovebirds. Former debt collector Ange is pocketing the wrong sort of pounds, while warehouse packer Ray feels he's a magnet for weight gain. I can just look at a Mars bar and I'll put weight on it. Both want to get to the bottom of why the weight's going on when neither thinks they overeat. They agreed to go under round-the-clock surveillance for five days. Do they eat more than they realise? We've just filmed them feeding the birds and eating the bread. Ray and Ange now think their time of being watched is over. As far as they're concerned, they're on their way to meet our dietitian for a chat at this London cafe. This is not strictly the case. Sorry, Ray and Ange, but this innocent-looking eatery is in fact a set that's been rigged with cameras. Even the customers are actors who are in on the sting. Ray and Ange are still under the impression that theirs is a normal, healthy diet and their weight gain a mystery. But that is about to change. Concealed behind a wall in the cafe is our instant room, containing every last scrap of evidence of what we saw them eating. Ray and Ange have no idea that on the other side of this wall, the dish they're about to be served up is a cold plate of reality. They're sitting in our special cafe, just on the other side of the doors here. They're tucking into, oh, sausage roll and coffee with sugar. And so far, it doesn't look like they suspect a thing. Surprise! <laughs> uh, welcome! Hi, so guys! Good. Up you get. Come into your very own secret eater's instant room. <laughs> come in here. <laughs> come, down, come down, come down, come down. Hiya. Are you OK? Mm. I've just been watching you scoff a sausage been... roll. <laughs> <laughs> right. How I've are just you? Been a good, roll. Good. Well, it's good to see you both. Yeah, you too, yeah. Have yeah. a look around, you two. Let me just explain to you that over here, young man, we have got just a snapshot of what you've eaten over the time that we have been watching you. And, Ange, this is merely just a starter portion <laughs> of where you've gone over the last <laughs> week. <laughs> Behind us here, we've got our surveillance board. Here we oh, are, we've got the Bolton regions yeah. where you live. <laughs> Check that out. I love it. <laughs> the chocolate bar <laughs> hanging out your gob in the garage. Ange. Look at that. <laughs> That's mad. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Are you in supermarket? I can't believe oh, yeah. this. First to face the supersized reality of what he eats is Ray. He's been at a loss to understand why he weighs 19 stone. I don't think I eat massive amount. Shall we have a look? <laughs> Ray told me he rarely snacks. 
Oh, I've got to have one of these touches. You know what, man? Oh, they've got chicken cheese. Yeah, I've got I've got to have one. Oh. My favourite chocolate fudge. That one. Oh, eh? What? I want my all because. Who? You. I want everyone. Uh, yeah. I'm a trick or treater. <laughs> Sneaking around. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad, that. At 12.30 on day three of surveillance, the house was empty. Ange was out. But what was Ray up to? According to his food diary, he usually has a salad at this time. Maybe he decided to go out for a salad today. like a salad shop. Still, our private investigator Duncan standing right behind him will know for sure. What, they follow me into the pie shop? And our PI bought exactly what Ray bought. Let's have a look at what kind of salad it is. I can't believe this. Let's have a look. Got one of those. It's a plain, plain bat. A hot meat and potato pie. Ah, the classic meat pie salad. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Ray may have hidden his pie in a bread roll. Yeah, you didn't know about that. No. But he can't hide those calories from our surveillance. I have never seen a pie sandwich. Have you never had a pie, Morty? It's 7.45 the following morning. Ray's gone to work at the warehouse after his normal healthy breakfast. A piece of toast and some cereal. But our private eye has received a tip-off. Right, we're here this morning to meet Simon. He's a colleague of Ray's, and uh, rumour has it that Ray might have had a second breakfast already this morning. I mean, it's not even 8 o'clock yet. Second breakfast? <laughs> when it comes to the mystery of Ray's weight gain, I think we may have found a giant clue. <gasps> Simon? Simon. <laughs> Hello, mate. Wow, this is it, is it? Oh, it's quite heavy, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Wow, so he's had one of these today, has he? Has he? He's oh, brought a belly buster. OK, what have we got in here, then? Bacon, yeah. sausage, egg. Right, OK. Well, we'll take this away as evidence. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. I can't it. believe you've got all that. When you look at it and when you, when you bring it all to the table... Yeah. ..like this, the photographs, the footage, you know, you don't realise. It starts to sink in a little bit. Yeah, especially seeing yourself doing it. OK, well, I'll tell you what. It's uh, quite we, shocking, really. It is shocking. It's definitely shocking. But we are joined today by our expert dietitian, Lynn Garton. Hi, Hi. Lynn. Hi. Lynn is here today just to take us through everything that, that you have been eating. Ray's most calorific temptation was his belly buster sandwich, with the clue in the name. Lynn's done the math to see how similar calories stack up. So if we take the fried egg, that's around 107 calories. And black pudding, around 116 calories. Sausages, around 123 calories. Bacon, that's around 116 calories. The hash brown, about 80 calories. And finally, we've got the um, white bread baguette. At that weight, around about 420 calories. The belly buster adds up to just under a thousand calories. When Lynn gave us the information on actually how many calories were, it was actually a big shock to Ray and myself, really. The weight's just been come piling on and piling on uh, to, to the point now where the hev I'm the heaviest I've, I've ever been. <laughs> With Ray's belief in his healthy diet crumbling before his eyes, it's Ange's turn for a bite of reality. Sometimes I'll have a mid-morning snack. Which might be... Banana. So where and when did Ange go bananas? On her way home from work, she stopped off at the supermarket. With our private investigators not far behind. 
that bag does not have a high fruit content. She's bought 12 packets of crisps, plus a huge chocolate bar. Over our surveillance period, Ange, the banana fan, actually polished off nine bags of crisps and chomped her way through 12 bars of chocolate. That's nearly five a day, just not the banana -y kind. Ange helps out at her stepmum's dress shop on a Saturday, so we sent in our PIs to check for further snack attacks there. So do you mind if we leave a secret camera in here? No, not at all. What? <laughs> Is Ange too busy to keep up the snacking? No. No, she isn't. Happening, happening. Half an hour later, Ange is at it again. Her snacking is taking the biscuit. Literally. Mm. P.I. Duncan hooked up with Ange's sister and her work colleague for further crisp intel. The most I've seen Angela eat in one go is three packets after each other. One after another. One after another. Chain. Continuously. No rest break. <laughs> <laughs> Straight down. A bit like chain smoking, only. Yeah, it's absolutely. Chain snuffling. Yeah. <laughs> Ange, you have gone very, very quiet. I'm very, very shocked. Are you? Yeah. Okay. I what... didn't actually think I was that bad. Lynn, can you just fill us in on Angie's snacking, how bad is this for her? Well, Angie, you got through about 800 calories a day. That's bad. 800. <sighs> That's really, really bad. And what does that actually mean? I mean, it, it, if she stopped the snacking, how much weight would she lose? You could lose around about half a stone in a month. Really? Angie is a classic cereal snacker, opting first for a satisfying savoury snack, but then craving a sugar high. It's an addictive cycle which overloads your taste buds. If you're a cereal snacker and want to break the cycle, find natural alternatives to processed foods. Eat plain popcorn or rice cakes if you fancy something savoury. And eat fresh fruit if you're wanting something sweet. Studies show we make over 200 decisions a day about food, and most of them are unconscious. I'm meeting Dr David Lewis, a chartered psychologist, who has a theory about why we overeat and what we can do to stop it. So, David, why do we tend to eat more than we actually need? Yeah. Well, I think one of the problems is we eat with our eyes, mm. which means that when we see food, we are tempted. Actually, a psychologist would say we're primed mm. by the sight of the food to eat, even if we're not hungry. But we can use this. We can use the, the fact we eat with our eyes. We can kind of turn it on its head and use that in order to keep track of what we eat by keeping the evidence in front of us. And therefore, you can tell your brain, I really don't need any more. Yes. By looking at the visual evidence, you actually switch yourself into a mindful state and therefore you're able to take more conscious control over your food. To put Dr David's theory to the test, we've invited members of the public along to see a comedy show recorded. Little do they know that they'll be the ones on camera as unwitting guinea pigs in our eating experiment. Welcome, people who look ludicrously nervous. Are you all right? <laughs> we'll be serving them platefuls of delicious barbecued chicken wings, and we've told them to tuck in as much as they like. But what we haven't told them is that we'll actually be monitoring how much chicken they eat. We are going to divide them into two groups. And one group is going to have the chicken wings, when they finish them, cleared away instantly by waiting staff. So the evidence of what they've eaten will disappear. Mm -hmm. The other group are going to continue with all the evidence in front of them. Now, what we would expect to happen, and what the research suggests should happen, is that those who can see how much they've eaten will stop eating. Yeah. Those who can't see how much they've eaten will carry on eating. <laughs> when it comes to weight gain, if you don't know how you're putting it on, you won't know how to lose it. And for 39-year-old Ray Donald from Bolton and his 37-year-old fiancée Angela Morris, 
Their expanding waistlines are a mystery they need help solving. We've given them a starter portion of the evidence we've uncovered, but for Ray, it's time for the main course. So, Ray, when it comes to food, would you say that there is any day of the week when actually you are a bit healthier? I think the best day is, like, on a Sunday, when we go for Sunday lunch and I get some veg in then. <laughs> so your best day is a Sunday with your Sunday lunch? Yeah. Or is it? Ray's healthy Sunday morning kicked off with a fry-up. Am I um, do a bit of a no. One bacon and fried egg butty later, it was back into the kitchen for a second breakfast, this time a bowl of bacon. The couple always have Sunday lunch at Angie's stepmum's house. Ray's fried egg butty and seven and a half bacon rashers should keep him going until then. Two hours later, Ray and Ange went for a pre-lunch walk okay. to the supermarket. They just came right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, we're in, we're in. Our PIs followed them in. What were they after? It's time for brunch, the pre-lunch lunch. So we've basically copied exactly what they got in this shop. So they got ham and cheese and pickle sandwich each. Uh, that's 480 calories uh, per pack. They've also got themselves some uh, crisps. And I ate that sandwich. Have it. After their pre-lunch lunch, Ray and Ange arrived at her stepmum's house for their Sunday roast, oblivious to the fact that we had secret cameras hidden everywhere. Ray's already consumed close to 3,000 calories today. Presumably, he won't be that hungry now. Got a possibly harsh one. <laughs> After the meal, P.I. Cameron popped in to find out what was on the menu. Hey! Hi, come in. So, take me through it. What did Ray have? Uh, he had a big portion of everything, some mash, vegetables, meat. Flip. This is bad. Yorkshire puddings, gravy. That's right, I'm on <laughs> Did you notice how many Yorkshire puddings he had? Um, I think he had two at the beginning. And okay. then obviously, as is one, as is like second or third portion. And he had cabbage and mashed potatoes in that. And ate that all in one. That one, then. How many tinnies did he have? We saved them all. I think there's about um, there was five. I think he's had two. Five tinnies on top of all of that. I need to stop. Okay, so Lynn, given that Ray has said that by his own admission, well, Sunday is quite a healthy day for me because at least I get my <laughs> my veg in. Was that a healthy Sunday lunch? No, it wasn't a healthy <laughs> Sunday lunch. No. In that meal itself you were getting through about 2,600 calories and it contained the same amount of fat as you'd find in this lard. Oh. Two-thirds of a block of lard was in that meal. Give over. Over the entire day, this particular Sunday that we watched you, Ray, yeah. how many calories did Ray actually eat? Seven and a half thousand calories. Oh my. Ray, Give you over. ate for three men. But I do that every Sunday. Ray is a classic double diner. He goes back for second helpings and has extra meals throughout the day. If you're a double diner, the key is to eat food that keeps you feeling full for longer. Swap white bread for whole grain. Increase the amount of salad or veg on your plate. And if you're still peckish between meals, eat fruit or a small portion of nuts.
Earlier, we set up an experiment to find out if we eat more when we can't see the amount we've eaten already. Are you all right? <laughs> Let's do this. We tend to not to be very good at remembering how much we've eaten. <laughs> we invited a group of people to watch some stand-up comedy and let them tuck into an endless supply of chicken wings. They were completely unaware of why we were really filming them. Half of them had their plates regularly cleared, while the other half's plates were left piled up with chicken bones. <laughs> We've been busy processing the data. OK, counting chicken bones, and have reached our conclusion. Well, that is interesting. Time to reveal the result to our unsuspecting chicken chompers. Hello, everybody. Did you enjoy the comedy? Yes. Yeah, it's fantastic because it had absolutely nothing to do at all with what <laughs> we were doing here today. You were, in fact, taking part in an eating experiment. <laughs> you would have realised, I'm sure, that we gave you vast quantities of chicken. You were actually split into two groups. Half of you had your chicken bones removed and your plates cleared. The other half of you didn't. We have the results in front of us now. <laughs> This is the remnants of the group who actually had the food left in front of them, so you could see, they could track what they were eating. And there are 41 chicken wings in, in here. This is the group where the food was cleared away. They had no knowledge of how much they'd eaten. A grand total of 70 chicken wings were eaten by this second group. So the guys who had the evidence removed ate 70% more. I was just kind of going on whatever was on the plate. If it was served out, then it's there for eating. So <laughs> I just kept eating. <laughs> I kind of held back a little bit because I could see, like, OK, well, I've eaten so much. Yeah, my plate was cleared away, and each time it was cleared away, I was actually quite relieved because I was slightly conscious my plate was filling up more than the person I was sat next to. This is a fantastic tip for anybody who does struggle with their weight. And actually, if you keep a record of what is going on on your plate, you will eat vastly less. And well, I hate washing up, so that's perfect for me. <laughs> <laughs> Results! What can we learn from this? How can we change our behaviour? If you're eating sweets, keep the wrappers there. When you're having a meal, leave the debris on your plate. If you're drinking, leave the empty bottles on the table. Give yourself visual clues to help you track what you're eating, and then you will eat less. Back at the cafe, it's time to look at the final evidence of Angie's secret eating habits. Ange, we noticed on our surveillance footage that, that you are quite astute and careful about having low-calorie drinks. Yeah. OK, your low-calorie fizzy drinks in, in particular. Ange does like low-calorie drinks, but our surveillance also revealed that she drinks a lot of tea. And each time either she or Ray makes a brew, in go two spoons of sugar. This might not seem a lot, but it adds 47 calories to every cup. P.I. Duncan got more sweet info from Angie's workmate and from a sister. She does have sugar in all the brews, mm. doesn't she? Roughly. Three a day. Three a day. At work, with two sugars. Two sugars, so that's six sugars. Yeah. yeah. That film that we've just seen there, Ange, was all the tea that you drank in just one day. Lynn's calculated the number of calories this sugary habit adds up to. You're getting through nearly 500 calories a day... Either. ..just from your sugar, sugar in the tea, which is equivalent to 60 jam donuts in Either. a month. That's the number of calories you were getting through from your sugar in tea in a month. That's really bad. I was absolutely disgusted. Not very good at all. Big shock to know how many calories I'd actually consumed. Now all the evidence has been presented to Ray and Ange, it's time for them to learn what the difference is between what they think they eat and what they actually eat. Lynn, can you give us the final results, please, on the food diary? Well, from the food diaries, Ange, you said or you felt that you were eating around 2,000 calories a day, which is fine, that's what the average woman needs. Right. In fact, during the surveillance period, you were getting through... 
3,000 calories a day. No. Was there really? Yeah. That's not good. And Ray, from your food diaries, you thought you were getting through around 2,900 calories a day, but in fact, you were getting through 5,300 calories a day. <sighs> That's bad, that. Ray, is it fair to say that you are a secret eater? Definitely, I'm a secret eater. Angela, would you say that you Two are a secret eater. Definitely, I'm a secret eater. Now Ray and Ange have seen the extent of their secret eating, they've agreed to follow a healthy eating plan. Ray will need to make some changes to stick to his new diet of around two and a half thousand calories a day. He'll need to include high fibre foods at each meal to prevent the temptation to snack on sugary treats and he'll have to cut out his Sunday excesses. Ange is going to have to change her habits and aim for 1,600 calories a day in order to start losing some weight. She must cut out the sugary and salty snacks and stop putting sugar in her tea. These simple changes will hopefully turn the tide and start the weight loss. We'll be catching up with them later to find out how they got on. It's time to see how much mischief we've been making at a leisure centre in South London. We've set up a stall giving out free hot dogs. It takes about 40 minutes of working out to burn off this treat. Surely no one's going to blow all their hard work for a moment of hot dog madness. It seems to be the staff's turn to exercise. How many do you actually have? How many do you want? You can't beat your hot dog. Burgers as well. They're jaw lines. It's free. It's free. Come oh, on. Ah. Well, you working here? Yeah. Yeah, my friend. Oh, thank you very Enjoy much. Enjoy yourself. No In a bit. Hot dog. Why not? Why not? What have you been doing? That's a sugar. Here comes Sue Barker. Out of the changing rooms, straight to the hot dogs. Hello. Fancy a hot dog? Yes. Why not? Why not? Indeed. Just been to exercise. I know. It's not good. No, it's not good. But it hasn't stopped you. We asked you how many gym goers undid their hard work and bit into a hot dog. Was it A, 24%, B, 42%, or C, 76%? A whopping 42% said yes to a free wiener at 390 calories a pop. Clearly saying no to food after exercising is not a piece of cake. If you're tempted to eat after working out, remember your body is a temple, not a drive through Try to avoid the temptation to eat treats as rewards after working out, if the shape you don't want to end up is round. Five weeks ago, Ray and Ange told us they were mystified by their weight gain. You know, I don't think I eat massive amount. To find the truth about their eating, we put cameras in their home and they were followed by private investigators. She's bought 12 packets of crisps, plus a huge chocolate bar. Our surveillance showed the couple just how much food they were actually eating without ever consciously realising. Let's see how life has changed for them. The day we actually got back, that was it then. I was not having any sugar in my brews. I've not bought any crisp and chocolate. Me and Ange bought one or two cooking books, healthy options. The weekly roast lives on, but now it's less of a feeding frenzy. We're still having the Sunday lunch, but instead of like piling it all up, like I said, like, you know, like a mountain, we'll just have like, you know, a spoonful of each, you know, sort of thing. I'm still a lot overweight, but I can, Feel it coming off you. And Ray's even made friends with the gym. The final weigh-in is still to come. But remember, it's not just Ray and Ange's secret eating we've been spying on. We've had cameras trained on the British public at places we're all likely to exceed the feed limit. It's time to excess all areas in Glutton Nation. <laughs> We're in 
in Chichester at a wedding reception. And our hidden cameras have got an invitation too. Eight out of ten of us reckon we're more successful dieters when we've got a special occasion to aim for. But what happens once that occasion rolls around? Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Mrs. Roger. First up is the three-course meal. Ooh, lovely. So, it's eyes down for ham hock terrine, slow braised beef with roasted vegetables and potatoes, and dark chocolate and cherry pot with shortbread biscuit. All washed down with plenty of wine. Or lager. It's a celebration after all, and there's nothing like a little glass of wine. And that is nothing like a little glass of wine. So proper table manners are de rigueur for the sit-down meal. But what happens when the formalities end and it's every man for himself at the table of temptation? The buffet. What strategy makes you a winner when it comes to second dinner? In accordance with polite etiquette, an orderly queue forms. But with over a hundred guests coveting the kebabs, a little weight will need to be thrown around when it comes to plating up. Look, Mum, no hands. An ingenious way to carry food. How much will be left when this group is done sharing? Not a sausage. This trick means more room on your plate for more food. But then again, who needs a plate? The bride and groom don't let ceremony stand in the way of them enjoying one last bite. When it comes to making the most of the table of temptation, remember, just because it's all you can eat doesn't mean you should. But at least you can burn off calories with your moves on the dance floor. Or maybe not. Back in Bolton, it's the moment of truth for Ray and Ange. Since realising the extent of their super-sized secret eating... Ray, you ate for three men. But I do that every Sunday. I'm very, very shocked. They've been following a healthy eating plan given to them by our dietitian. If they've stuck to it, they should each have lost between five and ten pounds. Have they managed to shed any weight? First to step onto the scales is Ange. My weight was 14 stone and now I've got 13 two, so I've lost 12 pound. Nearly a stone? Yeah. <laughs> I feel a lot, lot better. I don't feel as bloated, I don't get the headaches, and my clothes feel looser. Now it's Ray's turn. Can he equal Angie's impressive £12 weight loss? 17.3. So you've lost one stone 11. Well, that's good. Ray's lost a huge £25. So between them, they've shed almost three stone. I do feel better. Things like um, my top button. I can actually uh, fasten it now. I'm very proud of what me and Ange have achieved in, in, in a few weeks. I didn't think I, I would have lost over a storm. Ray and Ange have started to beat the Battle of the Bulge, taking some simple steps for a healthier lifestyle. Well done. <laughs> oh. I am now an ex-secret eater. I'm not a secret eater anymore. I'm very honest. The future's bright, and a certain big day may be about to find its way into the couple's diary. Looking forward to the wedding. We're open for back end of this year. Look how baggy that is. Get somebody else in there. Obviously, there's a light at the end of the tunnel now because you can see your weight coming down. I'm going to get myself a wedding dress that's a lot more fitted, you know, not as bulky. It just it makes you feel better, you know, when you can fit into clothes better. Give it another five or six months, she'll be on catwalk. <laughs>